Hey, Joe Gilder here with Personas. At the NAMM show a couple weeks ago, my buddy Brad came up to me. Brad has a pro studio out in Colorado, and he asked me, thinking about switching to Studio One, want to dip my toes in the water, if you could just give me one feature, what would it be? One reason to make me switch. And it totally caught me off guard. But I said, are you doing client work, both mixing and mastering, as well as recording? And he said, yes. And so I showed him the project page and how that integrates with the song page. I'm going to show that to you now. And then if you're intrigued and want to know more, if you're not too familiar with Studio One, I'll go on and show you a few of my other favorite features in Studio One, my top seven features that I came up with. Now, the thing about these is none of these are like super blockbuster, amazing, flashy features, but they're the stuff that won me over all those years ago, and they're still core to the way I work when I'm making music in my studio, and I want to share those with you as well. So let's dive in. Okay, now I'm going to show you the one feature that I showed my buddy Brad, and that is the integration of the project and song pages inside of Studio One Professional. So here's a song page. It's where you do all your recording and your mixing, right? Every DAW has a version of this. Studio One, however, has something called the project page, which is where you do your mastering. It's a mastering suite built into Studio One. Now that's all well and good, but the song pages and the mastering pages actually talk to each other to keep everything updated. So let's close this mastering page for a second. No, I don't save changes. And let's say I'm, I worked on my mix, sent it to my client. He wrote back and said, hey, this is great, but could you turn the background vocals down a little bit? And I said, yep, sure, no problem. Turned them down, saved the session, went to lunch. Come back from lunch and say, oh, I need to render that out and send it to him to check out. So I open the mastering session, the mastering project for this session. And look what happens. It says, hey, uh, this song has been updated. And you know that because the window pops up and also because this wrench over here for that song is red. I say, hmm, okay, right, that's right, I did make a change. And I hit okay. What happens next? Studio One goes, opens that song file, then bounces that song file, the newest mix that I've created, then it closes the song file, goes back to the project window and says, all right, we're all done, updated. And now this mix with the adjusted volume for the background vocals has been updated in this mastering session. And guess what? That works across a five song EP or a 12 song album. I can go do little tweaks to 12 songs and then open the project page for that album and say, yes, update all the songs. And then I can go to lunch while it does all the updating behind the scenes without me having to be here and click a single thing. That is so fun. Okay, that was my one thing. If you're intrigued and want to know a few other of my favorite features, let's dive in. Here's thing number two, which is the slip edit mode inside of Studio One. This is something, okay, let me just show you how I used to do editing, okay? Let's say this uh, guitar hit right here, Let's say it came in a little bit late, and I want to slide it over. I don't want to use quantize. I just want to slide it over and do kind of a more proper, old-school type of editing. Well, I would have to go like this. I'd slide it over. Then I'd have to trim this back, and then trim this back, and then fade this and fade that, and then it'd be good. Studio One does all of that for me almost automatically, but I can still manually place it where I want it to go. Here's how that works. I select here. I select here. Then I hold down Command and Option. I think it's Control Alt on the PC. And you'll see this little different looking tool pop up. Then I just click and drag and look what happens. The audio is moving, but the edges are staying where they are. So I can move this wherever it needs to be, let go. Then I can press X, boom, and it crossfades for me automatically at both ends. And then if the edit point still isn't right, I can slide that crossfade around. This has cut my editing time down by a huge amount. Instead of taking seven steps to do one edit, it takes like one and a half or two. Thing number three, drag and drop. This is something you hear is synonymous with Studio One since the beginning. When Personas actually launched Studio One, I was working as a sales engineer at Sweetwater, and we were all kind of underwhelmed by this idea of dragging and dropping. It seemed elementary. It seemed like something only beginners would do. Find a plugin over here and then drag it where you want it to go. But then I tried it. So in the old days, when I was using Pro Tools, here's how I would put, let's say, a compressor plugin on a vocal track. I would click here, and then I would go, and I would find the plugin, the compressor, there. Now I have a plugin. 
Okay, a couple of steps. If I had more than one or it was categorized in a different way, I would have to click and then go and scroll and find. It was just, it was always going to the menu and then opening it. Well, Studio One dedicates this little area on the right hand side to my plugins. I can even keep my favorite ones right here at the top. So if I want a plugin on a track, instead of having to go into a menu, I can come up here, grab that compressor, drop it on the track. Or let's say I don't have the window open. Maybe I'm like rocking just the arrange view and I want to drop a compressor on a track. Well, I can just drop it right here on this vocal and it throws it on the track and open up, opens the plugin up ready for me to go. Or let's say there's some guitars here that all need, each of them needs a little bit of EQ. Uh, no problem. Let's say all these tracks here need e EQ. I can select them all, drag an EQ on there and it drops an EQ onto every track that I had selected. And that's just that's just scratching the surface. Let's say I want to do a reverb send on this vocal. In other systems, you have to create a bus, create a send, send the track to the bus, then put the reverb plugin on the bus. With this, I can say, you know what? Here's here's my reverb plugin. Here's a plate that I love to use. I'm going to drag it here to the send of the vocal track, and look what happens. It did a bunch of things right there for us automatically. First of all, it created a send on this vocal. It created an effects channel or an effects return, and it put the plugin on there, all by just dragging this and putting it in the right spot. It's even so simple, like if you if you buy a bundle or a new set of plugins from the Persona shop and you want to install those, you literally just drag the installer here to the start page and it'll start the installation. It is creepy how intuitive it is and how much it knows what you're trying to do and a lot of times it just does it for you. Thing number four, keyboard shortcuts. If you are coming from a system like Pro Tools, you know shortcuts are the way to go, the way to be fast, the way to not have to click and drag everything. You have keyboard shortcuts for everything. Well, Studio One just takes that a step further. There are so many built-in shortcuts that are super handy. For example, let's say I'm working on this vocal and I'd like to solo it. Well, I could come over here and click the solo button, or I could just press the S key. Boom. Or maybe I want to solo all of these vocals. I hold down shift, select them, just like you would anything. Uh, then I just press S. Boom. Or maybe I press M for mute. Or maybe I need to record with these tracks, and I press R. And they all you'll see, they all lit up, ready to record. That is just built-in functionality inside of Studio One. I love that. But it goes a lot further. If there's a certain tool or command that you use regularly, you can come in here and say, you know what, that'd be great if I could set up my own shortcut for rewind. And I could rewind by one bar and I can change this to be whatever key I want. And it'll just say, great, let's do that. So I've set up my rewind and fast forward to be my bracket keys on my keyboard. And that's just something I did custom. So I can go like this, boom, 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 from my keyboard. Pretty dope. Here's another one that I've used so much I forgot I couldn't do that before in my old system. Here are, these purple tracks are my drums. Back in the day, I've watched videos of like good friends using Pro Tools and they'll do something like, let's listen to these drums and they'll select them all and they'll press solo, which you can't even do that without like grouping things, but they'll go through and they'll solo everything and then they'll realize, oh, I can't hear it. Why? Because they'll have to go over here and also solo their drum bus or they'll have to remember to make it solo safe, which is just a hassle to do. In Studio One, if you have a track that is going to a bus and you solo that track, it automatically opens up all the buses to which that track is already routed because that's what you want to happen. So for example, this snare bottom track, it is routed to this bus, which is both of my snare microphones. That is routed to my drums bus. In other systems, if I wanted to hear that, I would have to solo this and this and the other bus. I'd have to click three times to make that happen. In Studio One, I don't have to click at all. The track selected, I just press S and look what happened. This bus is open and this bus is open and this bus and this, all the buses to which that track is routed are open, including any effects. So if I want to listen to this Tom with the reverb effect, check it out. The reverbs automatically solo safe so they will you'll hear the reverb in addition to that it's intuitive it's what you would expect to happen on any system studio one does it thing number six i've already showed this but i want to show it again impromptu grouping in other systems if i wanted to for example take all these drum faders down they were just too loud i would have to select them i'd have to use a keyboard command to enable a group then i could turn them down then i would have to disable that group to make sure i don't accidentally adjust all of them at once again well guess what in studio one you there are groups and you can use it that way but you don't have to i can literally go i'm going to select all these and turn them down bam I did not create a group, I didn't do anything, and then I deselect them and we're good to go. Or maybe I just want to select these four because they're too quiet. 
I can do that. Or I want to select this one, this one, this one, and this one, and just turn those up. Boom. It just works the way you expect it to work. And as I already showed you, if I want to take these three tracks and put an EQ on there, these four tracks, I select them, drag an EQ anywhere, and it makes it puts an EQ in all the spots. All four of those are EQs that are now there. Same thing if I get a great EQ setting on this one and I want to copy it over to these tracks, I can just do that. And then, bam, now those tracks have that same EQ setting. It is insane how powerful these little features are. And finally, thing number seven, automatic crossfades. Studio One will almost always put a crossfade in when you need one without you having to tell it to. I showed you that a little bit earlier, but let's say we're, we're punching in a vocal here. So we got a vocal going and we go, la, 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 we sang that part, great. Now, let's zoom in and see what happened. Oh, look, there's a crossfade there where I punched in and there's a crossfade there where I punched out automatically. Now, we can certainly go in and we can adjust this. Maybe I punched in a little early. Maybe I punched out a little late, um, but the crossfade is already there. Or let's say you recorded a bunch of vocal takes and you want to do some comping and comp a few takes together. Uh, the comping feature, which I've done in another video, is super sick and you can do it very easily selecting different takes from different layers. But then guess what happens? If you zoom in on the part, the actual comp that was created, guess what? Yep, you guessed it. It added crossfades to all those spots where things were overlapping. So we never have to worry about that clicking and popping that happens. I can't tell you how many times in an older system I would do a bunch of editing and then I'd forget to do a batch crossfade where it inserts all the fades as needed and there's all these pops and clicks in my audio. That's annoying. There's never a reason for that not to be in there. And this is a yet another way that Studio One rocks. Okay, I know I said that would be quick, but I just get excited and love talking about this stuff. But this, if you came up to me at the NAMM show at the booth and said, give me your best features in Studio One that you use all the time that won you over, this would be the start of that for sure. And you'd have to stop me because I would want to keep going because there's so many more. But I will give you a break today. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment if you have a question, and I'll see you in the next one.